New Vision Christian Center.
Could you not lift your hands and say thank you to a God that loves you that much? He loved you enough to look beyond every thought, to look beyond every sin, and He saved your life. He's an awesome God. There's none like you. I'm going to turn this back into the hands of looking at speaks. Like, who would serve a God like this? So many of us are going through stuff we've never experienced before. I know for me personally, I'm going through trials that I've never experienced before. It's new. If it was more like the old stuff, I think I would be alright. But it's, it's the new things that are coming up. But we serve a God that prepares us for every season of our life. So if you're going through a dark season this morning, I dare you to just put it in the hands of the one that we are going to serve it again, who can fix it. Put it in the hands of the one who can work the mirror. Put it in the hands of the one who can open blinded eyes and you will submit it again.
simply because of the fact that so many of us are dealing with heartache, we are dealing with hurt, we are dealing with strain, we are dealing with struggles financially, mentally, physically, emotionally, to include spiritually. Amen. We have questioned God on so many different levels of why. And when I hear that, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I watched a movie finally called Harriet last night. When I seen the type of woman that she was, um, she had the t determination yes, to become free. Yes. There was a goal in mind for her. It had nothing to do with <laughs> simply remaining stagnant, remaining still, um, being comfortable in her situation. She knew that she wanted more, she knew that she wanted better, and she knew that it was out there. And the only way to receive that is to actually try. Her minister told her that if you go with fear, you're not going to be able to complete it. If you take God with you, every step that you go through, you might be able to get somewhere. But it's through your faith that you will be able to climb those trees, that you'll be able to get through those hills. So what that showed me in today's day and age, that if they were able to overcome and see it through, for their freedom as a body of people, yeah. even through fear, knowing that they can be hung, they can yes. be tarred and feathered. Uh -huh. They no longer wanted to be under their master's hand. They no longer wanted to deal with the idea of being told what they can and cannot do, being limited. So I'm telling you today, saints, do not limit yourself 
yes. with yes. anything that you have going on and anything that you want to do. Mm -hmm. The race is not won by who is the fastest. Come the on. race is won oh. by each of us taking our own steps oh, and take utilizing our own paths and asking God to help determine what that path looks like. Yes. So when we say I can do all things through Christ, it's not a saying. It's not just words. It's not words grouped together for a sentence. It's to encourage you that all things are possible if you believe in Him. If you believe in yourself, grow in spirit, grow in mind, grow in body, grow in soul. Tell yourself daily that you have the ability to be able to do it. We are just as good as all the people who are rich right now. We are just as smart as all the people who have gone to Ivy League schools. We are just as beautiful as those who have walked on the walkways in Paris fashion shows. So we have to believe, regardless of your age, regardless of your ailments, regardless of what somebody told you, or what your situation is telling you. I've learned to start telling my situation, this is what God provides for me. Uh -huh. I had anxiety really bad. And I've noticed over the past couple of months that I had to, I was able to relieve myself of dealing with it Amen. by telling my situation about the type of That's God right. that I serve. Yeah. So I encourage you guys to do the same thing. Amen. So your situation to include yourself, this is the type of God that I serve. And if I serve this type of God, then I'm able to create a new situation in me. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Let's say let's be comfortable. Wow. I I heard everything. Yeah. I was trying to get everybody together. So still got to be in control. Are we ready? Okay. So um we're speaking for it. We'll just hook it up to my phone. We're going to do an old song, We Love You, Lord. Amen. Yeah. So, um, take me on. Do I see a favor and hold the phone? Amen. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's my nephew. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't know. That's my nephew. Amen. He used to be part of the Sunshine Band, too. Him and his brother had a little, little rap part. Uh -huh. I asked him one day, are you going to do a rap part for me? What did he tell me? No, nah, Auntie, I'm going to do All right. Come on up here. Amen. We're going to do something that we know. Come on, Talia. You ready, girl? All right. Oh, man. Oh, where's Leilani and Carter? Tell me, come on. Kitchen. All right. All right. We relax today. Man. Show us. I mean, the shoes. Man. Can we say? Can we say?
Amen. 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 That was quick, quick, quick. Amen. Did y'all enjoy them just a little bit? Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. So next on the program, um, before I turn it over to the pulpit, we have a liturgical dance by one of the sisters here. And uh, I thought about her doing a praise dance. But then, it said uh, she's supposed to do it. At first I was like, no, she probably don't want to, but uh, the host said, no, she has to do this dance. And then uh, Mama Monique Washington called me and said, did you hear that she's supposed to do the praise dance? I said, I thought about it, but I guess she's supposed to do it before her dad gets up to minister. So, um, <coughs> Is she going to be Okay. Amen. Amen. All right. She went to the bathroom. Okay. Um, while she's getting dressed, can we turn it over to the pulpit, Pastor? Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. We're going to turn it over to the Amen. pulpit. God has been so good. Thank y'all for um, getting with me on fourth Sunday. God is good, and I thank him for that. Join the children. I was gonna. I, I liked it. I wanted to get out there and so I could watch them now, Brother Barnes, because uh, you know they're growing up so fast. Amen. They, they'll be up big before you know it. Amen. And joining the Navy. Uh -huh. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Or they'll be going to college, y'all. Uh, mm -hmm. There'll be, be some kind of other thing will be going on. And uh, I just uh, look around and I'm so thankful. Uh, Elder Butler will be here today. Uh, I enjoyed the Sunday school, and I really wish you, our kids could get to Sunday school. I, they're missing, they're missing a lot if you don't bring them to Sunday school. Man. You're really taking something from them that they can't never get back. Yes, sir. Sunday school is unique, Amen. and if you bring your children to Sunday school, they get something that you can't really give them at home because they get to be with other kids, they get to study the Bible, and it's just a, it's a, it's an amazing institution that God has allowed the church to establish within itself. And I just, uh, I've been so happy this week, feeling so fulfilled, working in the kitchen and uh, cleaning up stuff. I, I was sharing with the ministers in the office a little earlier that in the kitchen we've had one of those military closets in the kitchen ever since we came from over Progressive. And Ella Hastings was my administrator and assistant pastor for so long. He kept meticulous records. And so I had records there that he had kept from 1972. And uh, he had files and the names of people that I had forgotten had even been to the church. And I uh, saw the names of children and adults now. So many memories and I was unable to throw them away. So I, I, I've been trying to clean the closet out for about a year and uh, all I I pull down a box and go through it and put it back. Man. Every time I see Ella Ace's name on something, I couldn't throw it away. And I said, Well, it may be something in there I need. And I found a reason to keep it. Amen. When you really love someone, it's hard to turn them loose. Amen. Hard to turn them loose. And so I struggled with that, struggled with it. I called Ella Washington. I'm gonna get him to help me. He and uh, Quan, uh, his junior, he, he came with him. And, but what really happened, this uh, first lady, Dana Eichner, she says, I need to work on my office. And I said, that's God work on the kitchen. And so we, I think it was Friday, I came down with the barns and 
got to, went to work, and I pulled the box out. Her and Brenda, I don't know where Brenda's at. I know she's in the building. And Brenda said, he ain't gonna throw nothing away. <laughs> See, he's been trying to throw this away. Brenda said, I've been trying to get him to throw this stuff away for a year, and he ain't throw away nothing. And so, she and First Lady got together, and I so I'm gonna pull these out. I pull one. I said, "Now throw it away." So throw it away. Well, you came down here to throw to clean up, clean it up. I said, "I can't do it." We're gonna go. I'm, I'm telling you, they made me. Sometimes you need. How many know? Sometimes you need help. There are some things that's so tough for you, you can't hardly do it. So sentimental. I'm a sentimental person anyway. I, I look at a letter. I have letters that people wrote to me. I have a letter with a picture that's drawn on it at Phyllis Wheatley High School in Houston, Texas. When I was in junior high, I got it in my box. I keep stuff. Amen. 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 And they looked at it and said, did you draw that? I didn't draw it, but one of my friends drew it, who was past, I, I keep stuff in. So I started, they started, they, they started, I started, they, they started. <laughs> they made me throw away my stuff. Oh, Brother Barnes. Sister Vaughn, they made me. I'm glad you wasn't in there. You made me throw away the rest of it. She, she was trying to make me throw, so I wouldn't throw. My, that corner is all of my paperwork from 1972 is gone. I had stuff back there as old as the most folk in this room. So you all helped me. They, they helped me get it. I'm, I'm getting started, y'all. Sometimes the past weights you down. You cannot allow your past to mess up your present so you don't have no future. I look at one of those papers at Ellie Hastings Road and I sneaked it where they couldn't make me throw it away. I got it too. I hold certain memories in my heart. I got pictures of Dr. Bro, my friend, for life. And I think some things make you stronger. Don't get to the point where don't nothing touch you. Don't get so cold that you can't feel nothing. Because your life will be miserable after that. Let a snowflake remind you of some beautiful moment that you had. Let a raindrop falling on your face remind you something about a good thing that happened. When the leaves change and autumn is coming in and you look at the aspens, let it remind you of something beautiful. Life is good. So when I look at the trees blowing in the wind. I see God. Wow, I'm still alive. Man, didn't that lemonade taste good? Tastes just like Mama used to make. Anybody? Amen. I see my little old shirt, my jacket, my vest in my office. That 
One of my girls that was in the group home that I used to run, she got grown and got her own family and saw in that trunk in there in my office where my mama, my, it was my grandmother's trunk. I used to sleep on it when I was little. And then my grandmother passed, gave it to my mother, and my mother passed and I got it. And in the trunk was a little vest left off of a suit that my mother made for me when I was little. And the moths ate holes in the jacket and the pants, but the vest was still there. Uh -huh. And she said, Dad, that's what they girls called me from the group home. May you, will you trust me with this? And I'll put it in, uh, uh, that was sounding pretty good at first. You didn't mess with that, did you? You didn't bother her, did you? All right. And, and uh, she put it in a glass to preserve it, and it's, in, it's on the wall in my office. So when I look up there at that little vest, I think they said I was two years old or three or something like that, and I'm 88 now. I think about my mom and how she made little William a suit. You blessed. Look at somebody say, I know I'm blessed. I remember how my mom used to cook. And go in there and me and her be hungry and she could take some gravy and some flour and she could make the best gravy and flour and some rice I ever tasted. See, you didn't know, I didn't know that was all we had. So the memory now that, I, that I'm knowledgeable of, of life is bittersweet. Think about it. And you got, you'll find out that you got some memories worth holding on to. But don't get so melancholy until it kills you. Walking around in depression. Use it as something to let you know that no matter what condition you're in, you can make it. If you made it through what, this is me talking to me, if I made it through that, I, I woke up this morning and I remember that I've been working since I was eight years old. I've been working 80 years. I'm talking about on a job. 80 years and I was tired this morning. I told Deacon this I said, I'm tired. But I'm blessed. Amen. I looked at this suit and I remember when I bought this suit and it fit me perfect. And that's too big for me. Because I lost weight. I'm getting healthier. Your mind. Look at somebody say, I know I'm gonna be a success. I heard Sister Sales talk that was powerful. I was sitting there thinking about, is that Candace? I know from when she come. Look at her now. See, you get to thinking about what God is doing, yes. and all of a sudden the atmosphere changes. Look there. See, the sky is the limit. What was that last thing? Something about, you can't, what was it? She just talked about it in my mind. It escapes me. Yeah, I, 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 I'm on time. I want to hear y'all say it. I can do what?
can do all. Yes, I've been hungry. Yes, I've been hungry. Yes, I've been sick. But I can do all things. Through Christ, I can do it. I lost my mama. I lost my daddy. I lost my sister. But I can do all things. Don't mess with me. I'll get up and run. You can't stop. Say amen. Sister, Sister Washington is getting ready to come. I didn't know she was there. I wasn't going to talk that long. Look at my I can do all things. See, you can't stop me. I serve a God who cares.
tell the Lord thank you. Just give God a hand wave. Thank you, God. I don't know about you, but I wanted to feel that for myself. Without any other words that we do, getting ready for our speaker, say amen. amen. He's coming in his own way. I called him early this week or last week, I'm forgetting now. So I wanted him to bring the word today. Amen. 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 I want to hear from heaven. I want, I want to hear from heaven. I want to hear a word. I want to feel, I want to see what God is doing. I am watching him make ministers. I'm watching the Lord develop people right before my very eyes. I'm, watch, I'm watching them do the future preachers and people right before my very eyes. Minister Asante called me sick. He's got an upset stomach. Pray for Chantel. She's, she's not doing well today. Amen. I'm very I was disturbed earlier this morning. I hadn't seen her like this in a long time. Pray for her. But I want the man of God to come at this time in his own way. Say amen for Minister Washington amen. as he comes. Amen. 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 Tell God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We serve an impossible God. He can never fail. He can do the impossible. We thank him. I thank him. I thank you, sir, for this opportunity. Um, before now, um, Sister Kendra told me something. He said he doesn't call to qualify, but he qualified to call. And before now, no one ever gave me an opportunity before pastor. No one. They said I didn't qualify. Thank you, Jesus. But I thank God that my story didn't end there. I thank God that he did see me someone who saw something good in me. I thank God that a man of God said, I see that you are qualified and you are able to preach the gospel. You are qualified to bring the word. You are qualified to do what God has called you to do. You are qualified. Not because you are good, because God is good. Thank you, Father. Shout increase. Shout increase. Shout increase. Increase me, Lord. Increase my capacity for you, Lord. Increase me, Lord. Increase my time to stay connected to you. Increase me, Lord. Increase my worship for you, Lord. Let me become one in the spirit with you, God. Increase me, Lord. Increase my stamina to run this race that has been set before me. Increase me, Lord. Anybody have a hunger for God on today? Anyone have the hunger for God on today? We thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Colton. Thank you, Superintendent. Thank you, Assistant Pastor. All my brothers and sisters in the clergy. Thank you to my family, my wife, my son, my daughters. My granddaughters, thank you, daughter, for that, that praise dance. Yes. Yes. Heartfelt. Yes. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Mama. Thank y'all all for your support. Yes. I want to thank my mentor, Dr. Prophet Loving, who taught me so much about the Word of God. Can we have a moment of prayer? Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this day that you've given us, Lord God. Father, I don't take this lightly, Father, to come before your people, Lord God. Father, let the word that is on me, Father, fall out on good grounds, Lord God. Let it be poured out, Father. Let them take something from what I have say, Lord God, or what you say, Lord God, and increase them even the more, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for this, what you've given me, 
Let it come forth, Father. Let the boldness of a lion come out of me. Let the boldness of you, David, come out of me. Let the boldness of the King of King come out of me. Let the Holy Spirit take over me right now. Let me decrease for you can increase in me, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this, which you have given me. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I can speak. The title of my message, uh, kind of struggle with it a little bit, but don't get ready, stay ready. And stay in the realm of expectation. What God is saying to me, he wants to increase your hunger for the impossible. Anybody expecting God to do the impossible on today? My scripture for today is John 6 verses 1 through 13. Say amen once you have it. Amen. As we read, after these things, Jesus went over to the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. I don't know if I said that right. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracle, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into the mountain and they sat with him, with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of Jews, was near. Jesus then lifted up his eye and saw a great company unto him. And he said unto Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? And they, he said, Prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which have five barely loaves and two small fish. But what are we going, what are they among so many? Jesus said, make the men sit down. Now this was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in a number of about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves and when he given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were sit down. And likewise of the fishes as much as they would. And when they were filled, he said unto the disciples, gather up the fragment that remained that nothing be lost. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they gathered them together and filled the basket with the fragment of five barley loaves will remain over above unto them that had eaten. Amen. 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 So don't get ready. Stay ready. Stay in expectation. We serve a God that is unlimited and does have any limits except for the ones we put on him. He doesn't live in the realm of man, but he dwells in an eternal realm that is not bound by time or limitation. In our own understanding, we often find ourselves putting God in what I call man's box, limiting him to our own experience and expectation. But the word of God tells us that we serve a God who is unlimited in power, knowledge, capacity, love, compassion, grace, wisdom, and holiness. It has been also said that you're trying to understand the fullness of God is like trying to put a whole Pacific Ocean into a glass of water. How great is the God you serve? Heaven is the throne, is his throne, and the earth is God's footstool. Isaiah saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and a train of his garment filled the temple. Ezekiel, the prophet, saw a glorious throne as daughter of the old is the place of our sanctuary. John, the revelator, one of the 12 disciples that walked with Jesus one day, he was taken in the spirit to heaven. And this is when he saw a vision of God, the father sitting upon his throne. Surrounded by the 24 elders and the four beasts worshiping him, saying that thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor. Powerful thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure thou art were created. Although John saw this into the spiritual realm, an angel of the Lord was still sent to him to understand what he was seeing. Will we ever truly understand the God fully that we serve? In the book of, the book of Deuteronomy says, the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and to our children. 
for starters, how is how is one person, how is three person in one? Yeah. How is he without beginning or end? How could he have created the world in just days? Just ponder on that just a moment. The disciples and their understanding wanted to send them away, but Jesus and his compassion told the crowd to sit. Just sitting some time takes obedience. Your obedience in Jesus will unlock the realm of possibility. Stay in expectation for the things of God. Because when your obedience, because when you are in obedience, it proves that you are in partnership with God. That means that you have now totally surrendered to his authority. Your life is no longer just your life, but every decision you make is now based on his will for your life. The Apostle Paul said, in him I live, move, and have my being. There will always be something God will tell you to do as an expression of your faith in him. Jesus told the blind man to walk to the pool and rinse his eyes. And after, the, after he obeyed the instruction, that's when he regained his sight. God tested Abraham also and told him to take his only son whom he loved and offer him as a burnt offering. Abraham told those young men who were with him to stay here. I and the boy will go over there to worship. Youth, where y'all at? Young adults, listen to me clearly. Many times the place God wants to take us, cannot, others cannot be permitted to follow. The place of worship doesn't require a crowd. Jesus had 12 disciples, but when he went into the mountain, he only took his inner circle with him. Peter, James, and John. And that's when he was transfigured right before their eyes. And a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son, who I'm well pleased with. This is true. The place of truth, place of intimacy that only God can desire from us. Unlock the realm of unlimited possibility through your obedience. So I say again, don't get ready, stay ready. Stay in expectation. I say stay ready. Stay ready to do the work of God until the work is done. Stay ready. Stay ready to do the work of the ministry even when your sisters and brothers of Christ hurt you. Stay ready. Stay ready to do everything that God has called you to do. He may call you to stay up for three days in prayer and the Lord has a need for you. Stay ready. Stay ready for the prayer for those who despitefully use you and talk about you. But he said you must intervene for those. Stay ready. Stay ready, stay ready, stay ready. Stay ready when, when it looks like everyone has abandoned you, including God. Stay ready. You don't have time to get ready. You must stay ready. Stay on the wall, Nehemiah. We got any, any Nehemiahs in the house? Because when you're doing a great work, you cannot come down. I said when you're doing a great work, you can't come down. Stay ready. Will you trust him enough to obey him even when you don't fully understand the plan he has for you? Many times God will not give you anything else that pertains to the plan until you complete the first step he has given you. He said, lean not that to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Why am I here, Lord God, in this place, at this time of my life? He said, lean not to thy own understanding. What is the plan, Lord, that you have called me for? Lean not to your own understanding. Quan Senior, I'm talking to you. That is for me. Lean not to thy own understanding. Stay ready. Once Abraham bound his son on the altar, he built, then he took a knife to slaughter him. But the angel of the Lord stopped him right before he could finish the act. Now, I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withhold your son, your only son, from me. So him not withholding his only son from God unlocked the realm of possibility through his obedience. So back to the story of 
him feeding the 5,000. So the crowd had only a need that only Jesus could meet. A great multitude followed him because they saw his miracle, which he did on them that were diseased. And afterwards, they were hungry and they had no place to go get something to eat. So what God was telling me through this little parable was increase your need for God will unlock the realm of unlimited possibility. Because when you desire God's presence over everything else, it causes a shift in your level of intimacy with him. Matthew 6 and 3, 3, 3 says, says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things should be added unto you. When God is present, your needs are met. I say when God is present, your needs are met. That means everything you have a need of, there will be no lack. Because in the kingdom of God, there is no lack. That means your mortgage is paid. That means your light bill is paid. That means your car note is paid. That means your child tuition is paid. That means your law student loans are paid. That means every debt is taken care of because we serve a God who's unlimited in his supply or resources. I say, my God should supply all of your needs. If God is be before us, who can be against us? Increase your need for God. Don't get ready, stay ready. Expect the impossible. So the young boy gave up the five daily loaves and two fish. <coughs> so I don't know if y'all ever thought about this, but I know there's no one in here. You ever thought about what would happen if he just kept that that uh, food to himself? I know nobody went through that. Yeah. But I thought about it. I said, what, what would have happened if he would have kept it to himself? Wow. Uh, my next point is live a life of sacrifice. What have you given up to follow Jesus? How are you measured in God's sight? For many of us, our weight in the spirit is not where it should be. To keep what God wants to give you, many of us are underweight and undersized. That means we need to grow up spiritually. Tell your neighbor to your right, get fat. Get fat. <laughs> yeah. That might be the wrong neighbor. Tell your other neighbor it's all right to get fat in the spirit. So when you pray for something, can you obtain it based on the level of your value in the spirit? Is your level of sacrifice good enough? Come on now. This is for the spiritual mature, not for the babies. I know that you, we have some mature saints in here. When God wakes me up many of the, of the night, do we pray or do we go back to sleep? Be honest. Amen. Do we pray or do we go back to sleep? You know God has called you to wake you up to pray for the saints of God. But you go back to sleep. He's measuring your weight in the spirit. What are you willing to give up for him? The Apostle Paul was a scholar in Judaism. A Pharisee of Pharisee from the tribe of Benjamin. And he was taught by the best teachers. Paul said, for I determined to know nothing among you except for Jesus Christ and him crucified. Jesus said, I will show him great things that he must suffer for my namesake. So he had to give up everything he knew to follow Jesus. I said, a level and a life of sacrifice that Paul gave. Jesus was at the temple one day, and as they were giving an offering, he proclaimed the widow gave more than everyone else. Because everyone else gave out of their wealth, yes, but she sir. gave out of her poverty. Yes, sir. Put everything all she had to, to live on. What did it cost her? Everything. Right. I say everything it cost her. A like of sacrifice carry much weight in the spirit when it's given. The apostle was trying to cast out demons from a little boy one day, but they were unable to do it. But you remember just earlier, Jesus had commissioned them to cast out demons and heal the sick. 
But Jesus came and said, this cow don't come out by only by fasting and what? Praying. Sacrifice. Are you willing to live a life of sacrifice to increase your weight in the spirit? Jesus was the sacrificial lamb. And he pleased God to bruise him. To bruise him. Philippians 2 and 8 said he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Even death on the cross. He paid the price for you and me. And he took the shame on the cross in the place that we were. And he became high priest forever. And I think that's what you talked about early in Sunday school. Yes, sir, after the altar of what? Melchizedek. He, he qualified to stand there as our high priest. Because he paid a weight in the spirit. Jesus lived a life of sacrifice. Are y'all still here with me? Can I get a little feedback from you, New Vision? Are you still here? You thought y'all still here with me? Can y'all repeat after me? Can, can you repeat after me? Can I get a J? Can I get an E? Can I get an S? Can I get a U? Can I get a e S? S? Whom do we have? Jesus. Whom do we have? Jesus. Whose power in the name of? Jesus. Is deliverance in the name of? Jesus. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue shall confess. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. At the name of Jesus, though he shall confess, he is the lily of the valley. Jesus is the bright and morning star. He is the one who was slain from the foundation of the earth. Jesus is the ancient of days. Jesus is the beginning and the end. Jesus, my provider. Jesus, my way maker. Jesus, my friend. Jesus, my comforter. Jesus, my healer. Jesus, my deliverer. Jesus, my redeemer. closing to my point this part of the message I received from a man of God in the story of the multitude being fed we always talked about the five loaves of bread and the two fish but do you know what no one ever talks about who brought the baskets I cannot get any help in this place five times when people was hungry in the middle of the desert but someone showed up with an empty basket I don't know who I'm talking to in this place but someone may have came ahead empty, but you determine in your mind that you're going to leave this place with something. I don't know what your expectation on today, but I want you to expect the unexpected. Does anyone have an empty basket? Does anyone have an empty uh, promises that they want God to fill? Do anyone have anything that God wants to carry? The emptiness inside of you, at the last hope, do you see any way out? If something doesn't break today, where were you going to be? Who has a need to have their basket filled on today? I'm talking to those who are desperate for the move of God. Lord, I cannot go back home the same way. 
If you don't fill my basket, where am I going? I need an overflow. I need my basket filled. Filled, 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 filled. Basket filled, filled, filled. Basket filled, filled, filled. Basket filled. Overflow, 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 overflow. Running over, running over, running over, running over. Fill, fill, fill. Running over, running over. Basket, overflow, overflow. Who needs a basket filled on today? I know, I know the master who can fill your basket. I know the master who can provide every need that you need. Overflow. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. Wow. How many need a basket full? Don't touch them by saying, I want my basket full. I need my... No, I need my deal. I can't talk for you, but fill my basket. Fill my basket. My heart is hurting. Fill my basket. My money is funny. Fill my basket. Fill my basket. Somebody help me fill my basket. Fill my basket. Anybody in here need a basket filled? Well, I need my basket filled. Fill my basket. Anybody in here? Fill my basket. I ain't talking about y'all. I'm talking about mine. Lord, here I am. You got to talk for yourself. Fill my basket. I'm hurting, Lord. I'm struggling, Lord. I'm struggling from Friday to Friday. Fill my basket. My children are sick. My son ain't saved. Fill my basket. My heart is heavy. My granddaughter is sick. I don't have the solution. Fill my basket. Fill my basket. My grandkids are suffering. Fill my basket. I need you to help me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I can't call on it for you. But I need help for myself. Help me, Lord. Help me. Y'all can pray for me. Just pray for me, but I need God to help me. Help me, Lord. They're turning on me. Help me, Lord. They're turning off their finance. Help me, Lord. They don't want to help me no more. I got married, Lord, and folks are mad at the old man. But help me, Lord. I serve you, Lord. I don't serve people. I serve you, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. My granddaughter is sick. Help me, Lord. My daughter is sick. My daughter is tired. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. My son going through. Help me, Lord. You my only help. You always answer me. Every time I call on you from my heart. Help me, Lord. Can you help 
Hamlo. Sing it, Hamlo. I won't stand if you say I need his help. Send your help, Lord. Send your help, Lord. Save the unsaved. Reclaim the backslider. Stir up the church. I need your help, Lord. Send your help, Lord. Stir up the deacons. Stir up the missionaries. Stir up the lazy folk. Stir, Lord, in this place. I need your help. I'm one little man. Send your help, Lord. I know who to ask for help. I ain't crazy. Help me. Help me, Lord. See, they don't believe in that, but I do. Help, Lord. Help me. Help me, Lord. I've lasted 88 years. Over 50 years as a pastor. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. Help my choir. Help my deacon board. Help my missionaries. Help my kitchen. Help my pool pit. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. I don't bother nobody. Help, Lord. Fill my bucket. Fill my basket. Help me, Lord. You know me. You know where I walk. You know how I talk. Help me, Lord. You know me, Lord. Help me. You think I'm just talking, but I ain't. I'm here where I'm saying. Help me, Lord. Break yokes. Set practice free. Bind up the broken hearts. Send your help, Lord. Send your help, Lord. The enemy comes trying to tear me down, but help me, Lord. Defend me, Father. Build a hedge around me. In the name of Jesus, control my enemies. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me. I'm your preacher. I'm your mouthpiece. Help me, Lord. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. I'm Lou William. I'm brother. I'm brother Ephraim. I'm Deacon Ephraim. I'm servant of the church. I'm Millicent Ephraim. I'm Elder Ephraim. I'm Pastor Ephraim. I'm Super Dylan Ephraim. I'm God's servant. Help me, Lord. You see me, Lord. Send your help. Hello, Sharab Asate. Hela, Shandorobo. Open doors that are closed. Fill us up when we broke them down. Say yes. Ah, yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes, yes to your will, yes to your way, yes to your mind, yes, yes. I made up my mind. All right, Shandorobo. Somebody say yes, Lord. 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 Come on, say yes, Lord. I'm getting ready to let you go. Say yes. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes to your mind. Thank you. <laughs> did you do the three days, sis? 15 minutes a day? You did it? Raise your hand and tell the Lord thank you. Somebody say thank you. Say thank you. Everything you try to do, that's good.
you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can do it. in a positive way. Satan don't want you to rejoice. He don't want you to receive what he gave you already. He's already given you victory. All you got to do is claim it. You just don't want it. You like being down. Luke 6, 
Jesus. Come on, say, Chantel, get well in the name of Jesus. Get well. Is that clock right? Is that, is that the correct time? 25 minutes to two. Is that correct? Somebody say amen. I can do all things. Is that right, sister? I can do all things. Through Christ, family can't stop me. Get between me and my God. He told me I can do all things. I can make it. Thank you. Hallelujah. for my enemies. child of God. You might have burned my city, but I ain't dead. They burned the city up. They burned up Ziklag. But he didn't let that stop him. They burned my city. I'm going to take back everything they stole. And then I'm going to take that stuff. Where you at right now? While the Spirit is going through, while the Holy Spirit, while the Holy Ghost is going through, stand where you at. Stand where you are. Get out of prayer. If you want, if you want prayer, stand right where you at. Anybody got to rub you now at all? What you got to do is get your mind on the Lord. See, some folk when they see you get delivered, they don't like it. Say it puts the Spirit in them. Well, they don't want to see you deliver. So what, the way you deal with them, you just go shouting whether you feel like it or not. Shout on the devil's head. Stomp on him. Don't let nobody take your job. Don't let nobody make you sad. Don't let nobody run over you. Don't let them do it. Come in the name of Jesus. You know everyone in this room. Touch every one of them have a special need. And then they don't have no need. Touch them too. Touch me. I need my basket full. Fill my basket. I give it. Well, you said, fill my basket. Touch my ankles. Touch my knees. Touch my calves. Touch my thighs. Touch my heart. Speak to me now. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch you that are standing in the name of Jesus. Everybody that stands and say, Lord, I'm here. Come and say, here I am. Fix it for me. I know I need you. Help me. Tell the Lord, thank you. Yeah, well, I thank you. God bless you, baby. See you. Did you burn it? Come and help somebody get this table. Yeah, well, I thank you. 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 Trouble all in the land. Trouble everywhere. God is going to deliver you out of all of it amen. with a mighty hand. Somebody say amen. amen.
Shalom. Thank you. Hallelujah. God bless you, everyone. God bless you. Amen.